Welcome to AccuWeather's Ask the Experts. I'm your host, Jeff Cornish. We go beyond the forecast to give you the how and why on all, all of the cool and interesting things you've wondered about and wanted to ask about in weather, space, and science. And today we're going to take you way back long before any of us were around when dinosaurs ruled the Earth as we explore these prehistoric creatures from the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the Triceratops and what their existence looked like way back then. Joining us as our expert to break it all down is world-renowned paleontologist Jack Horner. Jack, it's an honor to speak with you. You have more than 50 years in the field, and you are acclaimed for uh, much of your field work and research on dinosaur growth and behaviors, discovered the first dinosaur nesting ground in the world, and served as the technical advisor on several of the Jurassic Park films, even have four dinosaurs named after you. That's very exciting, Jack. So thanks so much for making time for us. You're very welcome. <laughs> well, uh, there aren't many people that have dinosaurs named after them. So we do want to get right uh, to this. And what exactly is paleontology and how did you turn this into a career? Well, you know, paleontology is the study of, of you know, extinct life, basically. You know, animals, that, animals, plants, you know, basically all life forms that, uh, that were here and primarily all gone now. So, you know, sort of historical geology. And if we go back millions of years now, what impact did weather have? We're always looking for the weather connection here at AccuWeather. What impact did weather have on everyday life of dinosaurs when they were roaming the Earth? Well, it would have been basically the same sort of thing that we have to endure here, um, except the, you know, the weather was a little better there. Um, there, uh, the world was ice free at the most of the time the dinosaurs were roaming so they didn't didn't they had a basically a warmer climate but but we have very good evidence that there was uh you know if there were hurricanes and 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 probably tornadoes same same sort of bad weather that we have uh around the world now so you know they they would have experienced you know a lot of 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 bad scenarios certainly we have you know one of the things that most people don't realize is that during a lot of the time dinosaurs were on earth there was actually a seaway that extended from the gulf of mexico all the way up to the arctic ocean and it divided north america in two pieces and that seaway uh, was relatively warm and tornadoes hurricanes could have easily come up that that seaway and 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 caused a lot of of damage and and death to dinosaurs um, all the way from from Texas basically all the way into northern Alberta. Very interesting. Uh, when we look at uh, recent human history, it seems that when we have periods of extreme cold. Uh, there's a little bit more human suffering and uh, dark ages and famine, shorter growing season, things like that. Uh, you mentioned the climate may have been warmer back then. So did dinosaurs thrive in warmer climates? Well, we, you know, we're pretty sure that most of the dinosaurs, if not all of them, were warm blooded. So, and we do find dinosaurs on the north slope of Alaska and, you know, high latitudes, um, both in the south and then in the north, there were dinosaurs in Antarctica. Um, Antarctica was was relatively tropical at the time. So, um, but they still would have experienced, you know, long nights. Um, you know, winter. The the Earth, you know, has has been tilted at pretty close to the same angle all this time, and so they would have experienced, uh, you know darkness for some period of time as well so it had to have been chillier then but it definitely wasn't you know as extreme cold as we have now so when we talk about fossils now how are fossils formed and how do you know where to look for them before we started this uh, the show we talked a little bit about it seems that there's a lot of dinosaur uh, bone digging in the western u.s more so than in vermont but I'm an outsider uh, for this kind of thing. So uh, what goes on with the formation of fossils and, and the finding of fossils? Well, first off, um, fossils are based, you know, I like I, you know, basically they're uh, the preserved remains of, of extinct organisms. Um, 
and and to preserve them basically the the specimens have to be covered up with sediment and then that uh, wherever whatever they're covered in has to be covered you know over time from the time the animal dies until the time that you know that we find them and so in the case of dinosaurs which you know dinosaurs live from about 230 million years ago until about 66 million years ago and so they basically have to stay encased in rock in all that time and then uh, at least be close enough to the surface of the ground now uh, to be found so it's all about geology uh, it's sediments uh, weathered rock that covers them uh, rivers carrying sediment cover um, a dinosaur, for example, or even a a tree, uh, any 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 life form, and and it stays preserved underground in these rock units for millions of years, and that's uh, when fossilization occurs. But then, uh, so we need deposition to cover them up, and then we need we need. Um, basically weathering uh, wind and rain and things like that to uncover them. So, you know, we, we, we then, <laughs> basically what we paleontologists do is we go to places where the right age rock that, that represents these ancient river systems covered up the dinosaurs, but are now exposed at the surface of the ground and it just so happens that you know dinosaurs lived everywhere they lived in vermont and they lived in montana but fortunately montana wyoming colorado utah most of the these western states are places where the right age rock is now exposed at the surface of the ground so we can so we can go out and find them well, uh, in, in popular conversation, it seems generally accepted, widely accepted, that an asteroid strike may have led to the extinction of dinosaurs. But in reality, was that the change uh, that led to their demise, or could it have been a climate change that ultimately killed the dinosaurs? Well, there's there's very good evidence that there was a meteor, and and um, yeah, I you know obviously. You know, a two mile wide meteor striking the earth is going to cause some climate changes. <laughs> um, but the impact alone, I mean, you just think about the size of the tsunami and and the earthquakes associated with it. I mean, there was a tremendous amount of of, of you know disaster surrounding just the impact. But then it also blasted a lot of, of debris into space that would have cut blocked the sun uh, and definitely changed, you know, changed the environment for some period of time. So there's there's you know hypotheses that the that the impact um, created a, a, a like a nuclear winter scenario uh, that cooled the planet pretty drastically, and that could have certainly caused uh, a lot of the extinction but we don't really know um <clears throat> there's some indication that that uh it may have initiated some some large volcanism uh, it, it there's just so many things that could have come into play uh in this particular scenario that you know we're not really positive exactly how it all happened but very good evidence that it was uh, initially caused by an impact and 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 that the impact itself caused a lot of death of certainly dinosaurs in North America. Jack, we have a viewer question, and this one comes from Al in Kentucky. So Al writes, could dinosaurs survive in today's atmosphere? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, they're, they, the, the atmosphere hasn't changed very much uh, in the last 66 million years. So, yep, that, I think they'd have been fine. Uh, there might have been a little more oxygen then, not not appreciably more. Um, yeah, I think they'd have been they'd be just fine. We we uh, we we 
we humans would be in trouble if they were still around. A lot of interesting information so far. We appreciate your insight. We're going to continue this conversation in just a few minutes when Ask the Experts returns. Coming up later in our WeatherWise segment, we have three interesting things you may not know about dinosaurs. Find out which one was the most dangerous. And our dinosaur discussion with paleontologist Jack Horner continues next as we dig into the connection between dinosaurs and birds when Ask the Experts returns. Welcome back to AccuWeather's Ask the Experts. I'm your host, Jeff Cornish, and we are continuing our discussion about dinosaurs and paleontology with world-renowned paleontologist Jack Horner. Jack, thanks again for making time for us today. And Jack, well, you were recently in Montana for a dig. Temps over 100 degrees. Montana can get hot in the summer. So how much does weather impact you when you're out in the field? Well, it, you know, as I get older, um, it, it, I, it gets worse and worse, you know, I, uh, but when I was young, you know, when I was in my twenties and thirties and forties, I, uh, I had no problem. I'd spend, uh, June, July, and August in the field temperatures well over a hundred degrees and I was just fine. But nowadays, you know, it's, the heat gets to me. So when it breaks a hundred, I usually pack up and come back to Southern California where it's usually cooler. I don't blame you. The uh, Pacific is a great air conditioner. Well, a lot of your research over the past 10 years has shown the origin of dinosaurs may be more closely linked to birds. So what led you to that conclusion? Well, first off, it, it's not my conclusion. Um, John Ostrom at Yale University back in the 1960s was was really the the person who 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 got us really thinking about it and and basically, he was able to show that that dinosaur skeletons uh, have a lot of features um, that uh, that birds have, and and basically dinosaurs had them first. And and now we know that it includes hollow bones and hard shelled eggs and feathers and and um, well, just you know a whole suite of of characteristics. And so there really isn't. There are very few people left that are arguing about this. Uh, we pretty well know it. And so when 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 uh, my teams and I found, you know, excavated nests of dinosaurs, giving evidence that dinosaurs cared for their young like birds, it it really, you know, it was surprising at the time because people still thought of dinosaurs as being, you know, big stupid reptiles that were just wandering around looking for a place to go extinct. But um, as we get more and more, um, as we learn more about them, we find that, you know, that birds really are dinosaurs. They are the living, uh, the living species. So dinosaurs didn't really all go extinct. We still have them with us. Fascinating, fascinating. Well, the legendary uh, movie Jurassic Park comes up in, in conversation with paleontologists and scientists. And you were a technical advisor uh, on several of the Jurassic Park films, and and even had a cameo in Jurassic World. So, what was that experience like? Well, it was a lot of fun. You know, it was fun working with Steven Spielberg. Um, it was fun working with Joe Johnston, uh, one of the another one of the directors. But you know, it, it's it's. For, for me, it was kind of boring. I mean, it, you know, they shoot the same thing over and over again. I mean, I, <laughs> I wouldn't trade my job as a paleontologist for anyone in the movie business. But you know, that's just me. Um, I, I, I had fun. It was, it was fun to see how movies are made. It was fun to work with the ILM people that were making the computer graphic dinosaurs, and with Stan Winston, who you know was making the animatronic dinosaurs. And, you know, got me to thinking a lot about, you know, trying to bring back a dinosaur. Well, on that topic, is there any reality to these films? Could science possibly bring back dinosaurs you know, beyond the birds that we see one day? 
Well, not you we're certainly not going to bring back, you know, extinct dinosaurs. We're not going to bring back a stegosaurus or a tyrannosaurus rex or anything like that. But it's certainly possible that we can, you know, rescue some of the characteristics that dinosaurs had because we have birds. And so basically, you know, retro engineer uh, a bird, uh, some of the uh, ancient characteristics, some of the ancient genetics of, of dinosaurs. So, you know, we actually have a project called How to Build a Dinosaur. It's the Chickenosaurus Project, where we're attempting to do just that. We are okay. trying to figure out if there are any genetic pathways that still exist in birds that that could be turned on and, and maybe we could, could at least see some of the features. Pretty you know, bring them back. Bring, bring something back. They may dig up the garden. There may be mixed uh, opinions about this. This is pretty fascinating, though. Uh, well, <laughs> it is time for another viewer question, and this comes to us from William in California. William writes, uh, what has been your favorite discovery or field experience in your career? Well, you know, I, that, that's a, I've found so many dinosaurs and so many things. Um, I, I would say, you know, finding the first dinosaur embryos, the first eggs that had little baby skeletons in them, that was that was pretty exciting. And and I, I uh, you know, other than that, I'd say, you know, my best finds have been my students, just finding great students and 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 seeing them now off in the world being, you know, famous paleontologists on their own. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. Well, you uh, live and continue to live a fascinating life, and we wish you the best with the, the next chapter, wherever that takes you and whatever you happen to discover. World-renowned paleontologist Jack Horner, thanks again so much for being with us today and for taking us uh, back millions of years to learn all about these fascinating creatures. Thanks again, Jack. You're very well, it's great talking to you. And don't forget, uh, when uh, any of you viewers have a question about weather, space, or science, you can write us or send us a video question at asktheexperts at accuweather.com. You can also call us at 888-566-6606. In just a little bit, we're going to have WeatherWise when we reveal which was the fastest, biggest, and most dangerous dinosaurs. We'll be right back with more of our dinosaur discussion when Ask the Experts returns. Welcome back to AccuWeather's Ask the Experts. It is now time for WeatherWise, and today we look at three interesting things about dinosaurs. First, the largest dinosaur more than 90 million years ago, the Argentinosaurus, roamed what is now Argentina, weighing more than 100 tons. So the Argentinosaurus was an herbivore, using its long neck to strip vegetation from high branches. Paleontologists estimate they were about 121 to 131 feet long, making them one of the world's largest land animals ever found. In fact, they believe the Argentinosaurus kept growing throughout its lifetime. Second, the fastest dinosaur. Now, the Velociraptor is one of the fastest dinosaurs that roamed the Earth, and experts say they could reach 40 to 50 miles per hour. The Velociraptors in the Jurassic Park movies were about double their actual size. Real raptors stood about two feet in height, up to six feet long. Their small size helped them reach these top speeds. And paleontologist Jack says that they may be the most dangerous dinosaur in his opinion, but there's a debate. Some say the most dangerous dinosaur, and at least the favorite for many youngsters, is the Tyrannosaurus rex. The T-Rex was the ultimate apex predator at 12 feet in height and 40 feet in length. The T-Rex was similar in size to today's elephant. A brain about double the size of other dinosaurs, their senses enabled the T-Rex to see, hear, and smell prey from miles away. The T-Rex was a vicious carnivore with serrated teeth like steak knives that could cut through bone. Most T-Rex fossils have been found in the western states, including Montana and the Dakotas. Thanks so much for joining us here on AccuWeather's Ask the Experts. I'm Jeff Cornish. Don't forget, when you have a question about weather, space, or science, you can write us or send us a video question at asktheexperts at AccuWeather.com or call us at 888-566-6606.